Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Friday, April 24th, 2020. I'm Fredicia Lybird. A new round of regulations under the Emergency Powers Act will be introduced on Saturday, April 25th. That is according to Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, in an address made on Friday, April 24th. They will begin this weekend with a 24-hour curfew. That is a total lockdown on Saturday the 25th and Sunday the 26th until Monday the 27th of April at 6 a.m. Next week, we will follow the same pattern as we did this week. On Monday and Tuesday, there will be limited operations, while on Wednesday, there will be a 24-hour curfew, a total lockdown. On Thursday and Friday, businesses will again have limited operations before there is a 24-hour curfew, a total lockdown for the long holiday weekend from Saturday the 2nd of May to Tuesday morning the 5th of May. From Tuesday the 5th May to Friday the 8th of May, businesses will have four consecutive days of limited operations while there will be the nightly curfew before we enter the weekend of curfew. As noted by Prime Minister Harris, the Federation is seeking to gradually return to a sense of normalcy while not endangering anyone's health. There has been a slow increase in confirmed cases. We have been assured that we have an aggressive contact tracing system in place and that we here in St. Kitts and Nevis have tested all who needed to be tested at this time. They have reported that the latest batch of tests done this week have all been returned negative, all 17 of them. This, of course, is very good news. It means that we are flattening the curve. Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris. A Nevis COVID-19 compliance task force has been established. The object of the unit is to ensure the adherence to the regulations outlined in the statutory rules and orders 14 of 2020 and subsequent statutory rules or and orders regarding the emergency powers COVID-19 regulations. The agencies that comprise the task force are the Department of Environmental Health, the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, Customer Exercise, Department of Consumer Affairs, Department of Labor, Public Infrastructure, and the Fire and Rescue Services. The purpose of the Compliance Task Force is to ensure businesses and public transportation, that includes buses, ferries, and taxis, comply with the health and security measures outlined by the Government of Singus and Nevis in accordance to SR SR and O 14 of 2020. Additionally, to act on the advice of the National Health Operations Center and the Nevis Emergency Operations Center to ensure the Federation remains safe and healthy place to live and to do business. The Compliance Task Force also has the responsibility of assessing whether businesses and operators of public transportation are complying with the regulations. The initial task of the task force is to provide some public education awareness to the general public so that the general public could be aware of their what their roles would be going forward. The second week would be an assessment of the various businesses and then after the assessment is completed they will make recommendations and following that explanation of the recommendations uh, what is required of each business places are the taxis and public transportation then the enforcement aspect will take effect so i want all in the business community to look out for these gentlemen because they would come upon you at a moment's notice and do an assessment make recommendations and it is up to you the entity to ensure that um, 
you put the recommendation into practice. Co-chair of the Nevis COVID-19 Task Force, Brian Dyer. We are in no rush to open the Nevis Island Administration fully as yet. That will be done on a phased basis. And this morning I would have met with the permanent secretaries to discuss that further as to how we will open to ensure that we maintain social distancing and we do not rush to reopen and get what is this dreaded second wave of contagion that many countries are saying that they're experiencing. Premier the Honorable Mark Brantley made that announcement at the Thursday, April 23rd Nevis COVID-19 EOC briefing. The Premier appealed to the members of the public to be patient as these decisions are made. And the Cabinet would have decided that the Ministers are taking a 10% pay cut for three months and that again is to show some solidarity. I would want to thank the Cabinet of Ministers. It is of course a personal choice that they would have made because let us remember that they are entitled to their salary and they have decided to forego 10% for the next three months as a show of solidarity. In my case, I've decided to forego 100% and that would have commenced um, on the last uh, paycheck. I want to thank again um, our ministers. We have jointly decided that we will make $13,500 available from our personal resources each month to provide food for those who are most vulnerable. This to me is significant because it is important for us that no family in Nevis goes hungry. And we will seek to ensure that those funds are deployed for groceries for those who are most vulnerable in the community. Meantime, Premier Brantley also used the opportunity to express appreciation to the Four Seasons Resort Estate for its contribution to the fight against COVID-19. I would want to thank Four Seasons Resort Estates they today delivered some 5,000 units of hand sanitizer. It is with our intention when we get to that point to be able to distribute hand sanitizer, be able to distribute masks to every household on the island of Nevis. A number of students and teachers in the Federation will be provided with electronic devices as well as internet service for the implementation of virtual learning by the Ministry of Education. According to Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Kevin Barrett, a number of surveys were conducted prior to the closure of schools to capture the needs of students and teachers with regards to access to devices and internet service while at home. This was done so that all students could have access to education even in a virtual space and that the teachers would have the necessary resources to deliver those lessons, according to Barrett. There is really need for a number of devices and internet um, service at, um, in homes. And so that is going to be one of the um, first order um, of business in terms of ensuring that we transition to the virtual um, spaces and virtual learning and classrooms. And the students, and teachers who would have indicated that they do not have, do not have access to um, devices and internet, they would be given priority in terms of being supplied with a device and internet. The permanent secretary then spoke about the stipulations of this initiative. The devices are going to be on loan. They are going to be the property of the Ministry of Education and they are going to be supplied to the needy individuals on loan, and they would also be terms and conditions that the parents um, would have to, to sign and before the um, instruments or the devices are loaned out. We want to make sure that, um, as I said, the Learning is done in an equitable way, and so we are hoping that all of the students um, who are in need of um, these devices, they indeed would be the first priority in terms of getting the devices. Barrett then expressed thanks to the service providers on the island. The homes that are without internet, yes indeed they are going to be connected, and they will be given free service for the first three months. 
and this is done through the Ministry of Education. And the procurement of the devices, that is also done through the Ministry of Education. And we want to, to, to thank all of our um, internet service providers who have, as I said, come on board and, uh, and offered um, their, their partnership with us. And, and we really um, appreciate it. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Kevin Barrett. In related news, Principal Education Officer Sonola Claxton says training for teachers in Microsoft Teams has already begun. We started training with our first round of teachers and we are currently embarking on the onboarding process. And that just means that we're ensuring that all of our teachers have emails that are compatible with Microsoft Teams. On Monday, we will have a, an activity where we, we speak with all of our teachers and then following that, the teachers will continue their training. The aim is to ensure that we have the teachers comfortable in the first instance with using the learning management system. And so at the end of that process, the students will be onboarded. The interesting thing about Microsoft Teams is that it has an app and it's been likened to WhatsApp and Facebook. And so the students, being digital natives, will be able to transition even faster than their teachers. And so, of course, we would provide the necessary support in terms of support videos, uh, tutorials, and other supports built in, and we'll continue to update accordingly. Claxton also said that testing of the new virtual platform has been done with select students and teachers. We actually have tested it here on Nevis with a group of students, and we started testing it in the Easter break. So we had a teacher testing Microsoft Teams with students during the Easter to see how long it would take for them to transition, how difficult it would be, what would some of the challenges be, and all of these logistical uh, elements have helped to guide our process on the larger scale. Principal Education Officer Sonella Claxton. A group called Friends, under the leadership of Rennie Busu, owner of RNL's Fresh Produce, has donated 300 hot meals to essential workers on the island this past week. Busu spoke about the idea behind this initiative. We came up with the idea that we wanted to help um, in terms of what's going on with the coronavirus and the essential workers that have been working hard here in Nevis um, trying to put things in place so the idea came out of one day we were on the porch sitting talking and um, we were seeing the police and all the necessary people passing and we said we should do something for them so we decided that we would do lunch and friends being the group that is accustomed to doing lunches every year we do a number of lunches um, one big lunch in December every year that we feed over 300 people, we decided we will do a lunch for two days um, for the essential workers. Busu noted that the initiative was a success as they were able to feed as much as 300 persons. We fed uh, 125 people on Monday and Thursday we fed uh, 175. And that includes policemen, customs officers, um, the people from the Solid Waste Management, uh, the Nevis Disaster Management Committee, um, uh, the hospital staff, um, among others. So but we feel as though uh, we were very successful in giving our small donation to the general public on a whole so that we can all get through this thing together. Owner of RNL's Fresh Produce, Renny Busu. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Freddie Silibert. Thank you for viewing.